Hello everyone, I am Dr. Sanjana Vebi from Sciamser. Today let's have a discussion on an important problem that affects the global population that is osteoporosis and bone health. Osteoporosis affects both men and women in the global population. However, it shows more predilection towards female population because osteoporosis or associated bone fracture is associated with the a hormone called estrogen after menopause estrogen decline happens and uh, it makes uh, women more vulnerable to osteoporosis okay what is actually osteoporosis osteoporosis is a bone weakening disease bone mineral density decreases and ultimately it leads to bone fractures that is osteoporosis and uh, often it is associated with the genes it runs in families and uh, in certain races and in ethnic uh, groups it is common in Caucasians sometimes osteoporosis is common in female population uh, sometimes the most probable cause is lactose intolerance and the calcium deficiency associated with it about 20 percent of the American women are affected with osteoporosis it's a grave concern and uh, half of the Asian American women are affected with low bone mineral density or low bone mass so it's very important to discuss osteoporosis not only to assess the gravity of the problem but to find solutions for it of course genetics is a non-modifiable factor but genetics or hereditary factor is not the only causation or risk factor behind osteoporosis we should understand that Osteoporosis commonly occurs in postmenopausal women and the reason is hormonal decline, estrogen hormone decline. Here hormone is the culprit. It is common in uh, families having osteoporosis or parents having osteoporosis. It is common uh, to have an osteoporosis uh, uh, in children or offsprings. But apart from these factors, there are many other factors operating behind the osteoporotic disease they are one is diet second is some hormonal diseases apart from this estrogen decline some other hormone related to thyroid gland is important uh, in causing osteoporosis and um, third is sedentary lifestyle fourth is our habits smoking and alcoholic indulgence and uh, fifth is some diseases uh, disease uh, treating agents such as uh, medications and drugs preferably uh, we can all this uh, we can avoid all these uh, risk factors if we put some caution or we uh, take care of the factors leading to osteoporosis such as poor diet first of all we can begin the discussion with the dietary interventions nutritional factor play a key role in the health of bo bones such as calcium and vitamin D. Calcium is very important for bone mineralization, vitamin D2. Without vitamin D, the minerals calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, copper and selenium, all these minerals cannot uh, give strength to bones. The process of bone mineralization is associated with the uh, intricately associated with vitamin D. Okay, so intake of all these minerals along with vitamin D is very important for bone health. So we can intervene here. Nutritional intervention can save a patient from having osteoporosis. That's the first point. And the second point is thyroid disease. Thyroid disease is manageable. We have medications. All the systems of medicine have medications for thyroid uh, disorders. In some cases, thyroid gland can be removed. Surgical intervention is there. So, proper diagnosis is important and assessment of the problem. Interpretation of the test results is important in thyroid dysfunctions. Usually, hyperthyroidism or overactive thyroid is associated with osteoporosis. In this uh, state hyperthyroid state the impact on bones is very detrimental because uh, the thyroid hormones can cause uh, low bone mineral density 
and ultimately leads to osteoporotic factors. And subclinical hyperthyroidism. I give emphasis this uh, emphasis to this fact because usually subclinical hyperthyroidism is overlooked even by physicians and patients because uh, only TSH is affected thyroid hormones are not affected no medication is needed some people believe so but ultimately it may lead to osteoporosis if neglected if not treated because uh, subclinical hyperthyroidism uh, may not produce symptoms in all patients but I, I differ here I don't agree with the fact completely because in my experience as a physician I have seen several cases of subclinical hyperthyroidism with the grave symptoms and uh, they, they are capable of uh, leading to osteoporosis or going to a state of osteoporosis or low bone mineral density if left untreated usually some graves disease cases without ophthalmopathy may present like this in subclinical hyperthyroid uh, state for long i have such a case in my uh, clinic and uh, now the patient is uh, okay with medications and uh, still the treatment continues because we cannot uh, leave the patient uh, without any medications for a long time we can wait if the pa patient if the thyroid uh, hormone thyroid stimulating hormone is depleting once again uh, patient should medications so treatment of thyroid uh, overactive thyroid or subclinically overactive thyroid is very important to prevent osteoporosis in the long run uh, in those people having thyroid diseases diet should be prescribed uh, it should be taking into uh, the diet should be prescribed in such a way that uh, the diet should not uh, uh, interfere with the thyroid management and it should be in favorable to what bone health so vitamin d and uh, calcium intake should be promoted in patients having thyroid disease overactive thyroid okay and the uh, next reason is sedentary habit usually people prefer sedentary lifestyle now they are uh, more interested in taking rest and uh, playing with um, gadgets and uh, physical activity is lacking in most of the uh, populations most of the um, population globally uh, so physical activity should be promoted for proper bone health physical exercise we should uh, use the term physical exercise instead of physical activity in physical activity means um, some movements such as walking and uh, physical exercise means some moderate intensity is there in doing physical exercise we uh, we must uh, put some effort in doing exercise and it's deliberate in physical activity there is no deliberate uh, uh, effort okay and physical activity of or physical exercise of moderate intensity is needed for uh, bone health which it should be promoted that is the third intervention first one is nutrition calcium and vitamin d and second one is proper treatment for overactive thyroid and third one is physical activity should be promoted and uh, the next reason is some drugs some medications can cause uh, poor bone health such as corticosteroids i don't uh, say that uh, that medicine is associated with side effects of course there are side effects for medications but in some cases it is unavoidable some medications may be needed in some patients but it should be uh, taken into account that uh, or uh, we should promote some nutritional intervention in such cases to prevent osteoporosis some calcium supplementation or a, a vitamin d supplementation and the patient should do that accordingly and uh, uh, patients taking corticosteroid for a prolonged period of time suffer from osteoporosis and uh, not only these uh, corticosteroids some medications for cancers or malignancies are also associated with the risk of osteoporosis so that should be managed accordingly by the concerned physicians and um, the symptoms of osteoporosis what are the symptoms of osteoporosis actually osteoporosis is a silent disease we should have strong suspicion if there is a family history of osteoporosis we should uh, give importance to nutritional intervention in those people having family history of uh, osteoporosis and uh, if poor diet is the problem right from childhood children should be encouraged 
to take calcium, magnesium and phosphorus rich food and the vitamin D should be sufficient in their body. We know that vitamin D is abundant in the sunlight and actually sunlight acting on our skin, the skin cholesterol is converted to vitamin D. So it's an abundant source, sunlight is an abundant source. Okay, And uh, we should promote physical activity, that is another intervention and uh, strong suspicion is needed to diagnose osteoporosis if there is family history if there is poor dietary intake of these vitamins and minerals if uh, the person is in the postmenopausal stage and the old age and uh, some spontaneous fractures happen the only symptom is a spontaneous fracture so the spontaneous fracture means a fracture happens with a trivial trauma it, the minor trauma minor injury causes fracture usually that amount of force is not sufficient to cause a fracture in a normal person but simply lifting something or simply coughing or bending causes fracture in such cases we should suspect osteoporosis and um, how can we diagnose osteoporosis the concerned physician may uh, order a test called bone mineral density test that is DEXA DEXA uh, results are interpreted to know whether you have osteoporosis or not even if uh, the scores are low uh, is or normal then the spontaneous fracture is there it is considered as osteoporosis and uh, it is managed accordingly some medications are there in the conventional medicine and uh, let's talk a, about the role of yoga in the prevention of osteoporosis and uh, some complementary alternative and complementary medicines have role in preventing osteoporosis uh, like in adjunct therapy uh, also in the preventive aspects and uh, in the curative act aspect uh, they can work as an adjunct agents uh, by promoting bone uh, healing that is a fracture healing and uh, providing some nutritious elements to the bones and promoting bone health is work uh, works as an adjunct therapy and some homeopathic medications are the like uh, calcarea group of medications and symphytum etc uh, they should be uh, given as an adjunct therapy in some cases uh, if there is tendency for bone related uh, ailments uh, some constitutional medications are also given uh, by the homeopathic physicians and in yoga some uh, yoga asanas and postures are promoted uh, for maintaining or improving the bone health it is not uh, tried after osteoporosis it is given as a preventive uh, therapy and um, in preventing osteoporosis the major factor is nutritional intervention and physical exercise and uh, we should uh, stop smoking and alcoholic indulgence should be avoided moderate intake of alcohol is not uh, uh, sufficient to cause osteoporosis however uh, alcoholism or alcoholic indulgence may weaken your bonds okay then physical activity has a crucial role research evidence states that physical exercise can strengthen the bone especially the uh, trochanteric area of uh, hip joint and uh, that is a research finding and we should promote physical exercise for promoting bone health prevention is the major uh, strategy behind the prevention of uh, sorry behind the occurrence of uh, osteoporosis okay osteoporosis is a grave concern so prevention is better than cure okay that's all about osteoporosis and uh, bone health thank you for watching science Please share the video with your friends so that we can share a vital information to lots of people across the globe. Thank you.